Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And I'm pleased to have on a recent commit for the UConn Huskies and a former Connecticut high school football player for Cromwell Portland and was a part of a historic team uh, last year. And I know I talked to Coach Bennett prior to this most previous football season, and he spoke very highly of many players that now have graduated and left on. But I'm pleased to have on one of them, known as Teddy Ballgame, and I got to ask about that one. But uh, Teddy Williams himself, appreciate you coming on, man. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm I'm really excited to be on. Now, I do have to ask. I know the nickname was given by, I think, somebody from Game Time or somebody else as far as Teddy Ballgame. But I have to ask, did you ever play baseball? At yeah, all? I, played, I played baseball all the way up to my senior year of high school. And then I decided to do track my senior year. Mm -hmm. So did you hit like Ted Williams or no? <laughs> uh, sometimes. I wasn't I wasn't really the best uh baseball player but I was I was I was all right. That's okay. You know what? Yeah. You're doing pretty good in what you know, football. <laughs> football things working out pretty well, I think. Yeah. So, you know, I want I really want to dive into as far as last year really quick as far as with your time with Cromwell Portland and then we'll get into as far as what happened after in the prep school and such. Um I know when having coach Bennett on and also some of your former teammates as well on to talk about the year last year. It was it was not just historic. I think it was one of the best seasons ever for a high school program. I mean, what, what Cromwell Portland did defensively as far as points allowed is something that you don't typically see, even from some of the best programs in the state. Uh, just talk to me about, you know, being a part of that. Like, how was that day to day? Oh, it was, it was awesome. Uh, we, we had a, a really good, uh, core guy like leaders for the whole team and our defensive leader was uh Owen Brunk he was like he was a four-year or would have been a four-year without if there was a season the COVID year mm -hmm. and he was kind of like the guy like if something went wrong here he knew to like adjust it to this and he'd tell you to do this and then it would just you it would open up making a bunch of plays all over the place now with you being you know one of the big players and there were other players as well you mentioned owen who i've seen many times on twitter last year and it was really cool to see some of his interactions with the rest of connecticut high school football it's always good to see the back and forth um to be a part of that like i said on day to day like you know the day to day you know going into games yeah. practices and so on um just talk to me about like being around all of that talent and with you being one of them did you realize what was around the team yeah, I think having all that talent around the team really uh, like allowed all of us to play at like 100% knowing that say you'd make a mistake, you know that. So like for me, if I made a mistake, missed a tackle, I know Ryan or Owen is come, is going to come over, make the tackle. Or mm -hmm. if I like uh, blitz and missed a quarterback, he throws a pass. I know Ben Fagan's going to break it up. It was stuff like that. We just knew we all had e each other's backs and that we could really, that allowed us to go at like 100%. And like all the time just flying around. I think that's what really made us really good. I know in talking to Coach Bennett, like I said before the season of uh, this, you know, this past season that was for Connecticut High School football, he mentioned how, and I asked him like, you know, what were the big components for having such a great year like that? And he mentioned a lot, but I thought one thing that was very interesting was he said the intensity of the ones and ones. And what he meant by that was the number one defensive guys against the number one offensive guys in practice. He said that there was such a uh, a competition. And I know you, you know, being the stud that you were, it's like it, it must have gotten pretty intense with everybody. But he said it fueled everybody to be at their peak performance every single time because the fear of that they could lose their spot to guys who were doing just as well. And there was a lot of competition behind. Can you speak to that? Yeah, we had guys uh, on last year's team. We had second string guys who would have easily started on other high school teams. So mm -hmm. running like when the starting offense against the scout defense, it wasn't like it was like a normal scout defense where the offense just runs all over them, everything. Sometimes it was honestly harder to go against our scout defense during the week than it was to play in the games against certain teams. And the same thing for when we had um, our scout offense versus our starting defense. Mm -hmm. We still had, we had Cole playing scout quarterback, Jack Nolan at scout receiver. And it was like, a bunch of guys who would have started on at other programs that we just had to like practice against the whole week and the whole season. And that's what really like, I think like 
took our game to the next level was how hmm. good our backups and our scout team, like who we were going against every week really was. As the season progressed, I know that it flies by. I mean, it's crazy how fast this past season was for high school football. Just like that, the season's over. We're on to winter. Um, were you able to, with all the accolades that you were getting and the team was getting during the season, were you able to take a step back and enjoy what was realistically a once in a lifetime as far as like what you guys did last year may never happen. To, I mean, if it does great, that's awesome. But it's one of those things where it may never happen again. It's like a once in a lifetime opportunity for everybody involved. Yeah. Uh, I definitely took the step back. I mean, after the state championship was when I really took the step back. Mm -hmm. um, it was like, like just a, such like a shock to me and like a, like I was at a loss of words at like how like well we were able to play throughout the whole year and like do everything we wanted. And he said we were going to do during the COVID year when we had all the workouts and, and all the lifting and all that. It was like really amazing just to see all of it like come together. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean? Like, cause we were, we were, we had been working for that like state championship for over a year, a year and a half. So when it finally like happened and came together, it was like, it was just amazing. You know, I, I can really kind of see because I know losing the losing a season was massive for a lot of reasons because of COVID. And you had some players who didn't even have an opportunity to play their senior year. You had an opportunity to be able to have that because of you being a grade below um, and to be able to be back and be able to play and such. Um, do you feel like the COVID year kind of in a lot of ways, like you mentioned, the lifting and such as far as preparing for what at the time you were hoping was going to be a season and there was do you felt like that COVID year kind of maybe put in perspective a little bit, a little bit more as far as not just the dedication, but just how much you and the rest of the squad wanted it if you guys did at that time? Oh, yeah, it 100% did. So when the season got canceled, mm -hmm. we uh, uh, started working out like probably a week later, maybe like on our own. And then like we'd get together sometimes and we'd work out. And we'd, we we uh, work out at this gym, ATI, Randell, uh, Coach Bennett. He knows the owner really well. Mm -hmm. So we would go in and work out then. And we it really, like, put into perspective not having a season, like how quickly, like, the game can be taken away from you and how, like, we shouldn't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. So we really just decided, like, that whole year, we weren't going to take the, the following year for us to play for granted. We were going to give it our all throughout the whole year so we can become the state champs. And you guys were able to accomplish that. And it, it was almost like you guys did it with ease as far as going through the gauntlet, as far as the playoffs was, you know, we're concerned. I mean, you know, I broadcast in the NVL and I've seen Ansonia through and through for many, many years. You guys did something that I don't think has ever been done to them as far as you mercy them in the CIC state playoffs. Um, as far as when the season was over and you were able to hopefully reflect for a couple minutes were you able to look back on like, wow, we did that to Ansonia. Wow, we did that to X, Y, and Z, you know, in the Pequot. Were you, like, were you guys able to recognize that at all? Yeah, I think we were because leading up to the Ansonia game, it was there was a lot of hype around it. And it mm -hmm. was like going to be one of like the, the better games that weekend. Mm -hmm. so, and like knowing their program and their history, they've won like, I, I don't forget how many state championships, but I think it's at least 20. It's a lot. So you, so you always have to respect them and like mm -hmm. knowing that we came in and we put together a good game plan and then we execute it. And then we were able to like kind of kill them when we, when we look, when you look back on it, it's like, we were really good. Cause that's like really like, that's a feared program in the state. And it's been like that for forever. Mm -hmm. So, and it's funny too, that, you know, we're talking about Ansonia because, uh, they just won in class S yeah. they beat Bloomfield and in talking with their players throughout the season, you, the team, and I'm sure you too, but also Naugatuck kind of put that extra gear for them and helped push them to the point of what happened this year, winning a title. So, you know, you guys kind of in some ways helped them to a certain degree, <laughs> even though you guys, I know you weren't a part of the team this year. Yeah. You guys were in class double S cause now six playoff teams or six championship teams. Um, now, before we move on to as far as your time, as far as after Cromwell Portland, um, who was the offensive lineman who had really long hair? It looked like he could have been in a rock band. You know what I'm talking uh, about? Ethan Philbrick. 
Yeah, that dude looks like he knows he probably party pretty hard after the champions, you know, winning the championship. Oh yeah. We all we were all having a, a good time after. He looks he looks like an offensive lineman. He looks like one of those dudes that play, you know, like I said on Twitter last year, he could play for the Packers with that long hair. Oh yeah, with this mullet and he's, yeah. he's huge. He's like six six, like three hundred or something pounds. He's huge. Yeah, and with his mullet, yeah, he threw that out during the COVID year. It just made him like that much more feared, I feel like going oh, to hundred percent. I mean, he could he looked like Bakhtiari for the Packers. That yeah. crazy, but in a good yeah. way. Yeah. So after you graduated, I know you and I were talking about how there was some interest as far as schools. Um, just talking about kind of what what led you to play. Now you went to Salisbury, correct? Yep. So what led you to go there and decide to go prep? Because I know some kids decide to go to college. Some decide to take that extra year to kind of boost their stock a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of what I, that's kind of the reason I did it. I had an interest from a few schools and took some visits. And then I decided I, I thought that doing the extra year would not only for football get me better, but mm -hmm. just as like preparation for college, like living on my own and having to get up for classes and do all that and go like to practice and manage my own time. I really thought that like doing the, prep year was going to help me overall like as a person rather than just a football player do you feel like that and you mentioned the preparation and kind of getting into that college routine do you feel like when you graduated from Cromwell Portland as far as yourself I'm not talking about the school didn't prepare you I'm sure it did but for yourself maturity wise did you feel like you needed you know needed that extra year to kind of give you some more time to continue to learn the the college routine to a certain degree yeah, I feel like I, I, I probably would have eventually ad adjusted to it, mm -hmm. but I feel like, yeah, I kind of needed that extra year mm -hmm. and all that to really like figure out how all that would have like that scheduling and all that would have worked. And I really think that with football and then school and being on my own, it's really going to like help me and it's going to really prepare me for uh, UConn in January. And what you were able to do, I mean, like you mentioned, you garnered interest from UConn, I'm sure other schools as well. Um, what what drove you, what interested you to kind of stay home and be at stores? Um, honestly, it's a it's a school that I've been uh watching for football wise for since I was little, like five years old, something like that. And I've been at their game since I was like nine months. My mom sent me a picture the other day of me when I was like nine months old, like out uh, tailgating with my whole family before a game. So it's just something that I've always like been around and I've always wanted to be a part of. So when I was able to make that happen, I just knew that that was where I was going to want to end up. That's pretty awesome to hear. And I think, you know, however far you get in your career, as far as after UConn, and if you have an opportunity to play at the next level, that's the kind of story that can really, you could share with not just future UConn recruits, but just overall be like, yeah. Hey, when I was a kid, I was tailgating with everybody. I wasn't doing anything crazy, but I was <laughs> tailgating being a part of the atmosphere, yeah. which helps kind of build what every college football program is doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm sure you were watching their, you know, the games leading up to now them being in a bowl game. Um, they had a fantastic season. I mean, they beat a top ranked team at the time in Liberty um, they had a lot of games that they were in. I know they kind of struggled late, but again, what Coach Moore is doing and, you know, the staff, they're building a strong team. And they got a lot of kids from Connecticut, you know, Edwards from Norwalk, Rosa, who got a lot of playing time because of a lot of injuries. Um, you see the opportunities that everybody is getting. Does that uh, give you even more like, hey, if I can, if I can show what I'm, you know, what I can do in spring and the summer and, you know, leading up to the next season, um, I could maybe be Rosa of 2023. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something I've, uh, been looking at. Like, so this past, like for the, this next month, mm -hmm. I'm really going like super hard in the, with the training with coach Bennett and, uh, my friend Derek Villard. So like that, I'm really trying to like prepare, like, so that I can kind of have an impact right away. Like, that's what I want to do is kind of have an impact right away when I get there. Now, what position will you be playing at UConn? They uh, told me slot receiver. Okay, that's not. Yeah. I think that 
I mean, I'm sure you're pretty stack. I mean, you would play punter if you could, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd play anywhere. <laughs> That's awesome. So being a slot guy, now refresh my memory. What's the size on you height-wise? Because I forgot. Like 5'11 and a quarter, something like that. So kind of almost like a Cole Beasley type, almost like a slot guy kind of yeah. in the middle? Or like what are we talking here? I'm thinking like a like a Julian Edelman or like a Wes Welker, something like that. That's I like I'm that. Thinking. Welker before all the concussions. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I think that's, you know, the way the game is changing. I'd like to get, you know, your your opinion on this. You know, you're, we're seeing a lot more uh, flags being thrown on defensive guys. It's becoming more like uh, basically Big 12 for whatever the Big 12 is left. High yeah. octane offense, throw the ball around, air raid offense. You know, Mike Leach, who just re- you know recently passed away, big into the air raid, you know, throwing the rock, throwing the pigskin. Um, you being a slot guy, I almost feel like that, that gives more of an opportunity for you to showcase your talents because you can, even if you're not getting the ball, you're showing a lot by your routes, by your cuts, by your attitude, each and every play. Yeah. I think the, the position has totally changed throughout the last, uh, 10 years, maybe Mm -hmm. it's not even that like being in the slot, I could affect the game in so many different ways. Like if you're outside, I mean, you still have to block, but if it's like an inside run, mm-hmm. most likely that corner isn't going to really make the play on an inside run. But at slot, mm-hmm. I have to like show my blocking and do all this and still run the routes and like catch passes and then block on top of that. So I think like playing slot has, it's like really shows like your versatility as a player as like as a receiver almost. I was watching the Jets Lions uh Lions game uh, you know earlier today and I was uh they mentioned how St. Brown for the Lions said how he loves blocking because he said that he's able to really get into it early with the secondary guys whoever it is but he said over the course of a game it wears on the safeties yeah. the corners you know maybe a linebacker depending on where he is and he said over time with them wearing down it allows him to have that extra couple feet couple inches whatever and he said that could make or break depending on the point of the game and when he gets the ball do you feel like that is maybe something that you could kind of correlate to your game to a certain degree yeah I definitely feel that that's something I could I could correlate into my game like that's like something that's like really true actually like when you're blocking someone and hitting someone every play that's not expecting to be hit it's going to take a toll on them throughout Mm -hmm. the course of the game so in that like fourth quarter when they're tired from being blocked whole game and uh, you're not, it, it like creates that extra foot that you need for maybe a pass to get in or that extra, like they're tired. So the running back is able to break their tackle and then mm-hmm. keep running like stuff like that, like small stuff that will affect the game. Like uh, entirely. You also make coach Mora happy too. Cause I'm sure he likes that. Or, <laughs> oh yeah. You know, uh, Teddy, I really appreciate you coming on before I let you go. Um, have you, now that you've committed and I know it sounds like it was a a dream for you to be able to play at UConn. And now that dream is coming to fruition. Um, what will it be like? Have you thought about, um, when you score your first, you know, your first touchdown, whenever that is, um, have you thought about what you're going to do or maybe, you know, it, you know, point towards your family or anything like that. Have you thought about that? Um, honestly, I, I really haven't thought about that that much. I've, I've just been more thinking about what I'm going to do when I, when I first get there, Mm -hmm. because I still like, it's kind of like restarting almost going. So it's like, I have to like build my way up. So I'm more thinking like, Mm -hmm. what am I going to do? Like when I first get there, like in the weight room, what can I do that is going to help me separate myself Mm -hmm. from other guys and help me, you know, and help others get better and do all this stuff rather than scoring like a touchdown or something like that. That's more what I'm focused on right now. And that's a good attitude to have. If you, when you do score your first touchdown, think about the Teddy ball game and do like a home run if you can. Oh yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. I'm hoping they, I'm hoping on your first touchdown or at least during the season, I hope they mention that nickname because I think it's a pretty cool nickname to have. Yeah. But uh, Teddy, I really appreciate you coming on. Congratulations on committing to UConn. Uh, best of luck as far as during the spring and the summer and such. And uh, I look forward to being able to follow UConn uh, next season and hopefully be seeing you 
Rosa, Edwards, and many, many other Connecticut products continuing to showcase their talents in the uh, college level. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. This has been a, I've never really done something like this before. So it's been fun. Always fun. And that, that's actually surprising. No, you know, I want to stay right here really quick with that. So you never had anything like this, even when you guys were having all the success last year? None of that? We had like, we had like the, the game time, like interview kind of before the state championship, but that mm. was really it. And it was like more of a group of us. So it was like the mm. four captains and then coach Bennett. So it wasn't really like this one-on-one, like a, like a interview almost. Mm-hmm. So I've really never had something like this before. Well, get used to it. Cause I'm sure you'll be doing a lot of this <laughs> to you, man. Well, awesome stuff. Thanks again. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. I'll wrap things up here on the Connecticut sports talent show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember CT stands for Connecticut talent. I'm going to find them all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. And be well.